I'm fucking losing. Don't look at me. Don't fucking look at me. Don't look at me. Don't look at me, god damn it. Voila. All right, guys. Can you guess which song won? I'm just going to do top three albums and top three songs, probably. I'm not sure yet. I don't have that much to say. And I'm not saying it's the best. This isn't an objective list. This is just my personal favorites. Um, let's get into it. Number three spot goes to Caro Caro Bonito, Time and Place. This album has a special heart in my place because since they released their their first single of this year, Only Acting, you knew that they weren't going to go for the bright, bubbly pop shit that they did on their last two records. What made them popular they weren't going to go for, which at first I was a little bit put back by, but over time I got used to it. I remember listening to this album the first time and thinking, holy shit, this is so boring compared to their old shit. But that was just me being an arsehole, which happens quite a lot with new music. I always judge it way too much for some reason. I don't even know why. Like even Deaf Heaven, which is my second, my tied favorite band. When they released Honeycomb, which was the first single this year, I'm like, this is dog shit. <laughs> and now it's one of my favorite Deaf Heaven songs. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just an arsehole, probably. Maybe it's just because it was new, like this album. Um, a, a different direction for the band, which this album very much is. Time and Place is sort of more rock, to put it really simply than Bright Bubbly Pop, which was their other two albums. And Only Acting is one of my favorite singles. It, it's about it's about becoming the thing you were acting, which I resonate well with. And it, it, it's not good. It's a bad thing. It's like you, you thought you were only acting, but you become that thing and now you're all confused and fucked up in the head and you don't know what's going on. And the music video does a really good job at expressing this and they go for these sort of dark sort of switch ups in the album uh, a couple times. Most notably only acting and their last song um, Rest Stop where it's basically just noise uh, at towards the end. Like harsh noise coming from Kero Kero Benito. You would not have expected that. I mean I guess I shouldn't be surprised seeing as though the fandom is between Death Grips and Kero Kero Benito is so shared. Maybe I should have expected harsh noise but the last album would never have suggested it. That shit was just so optimistic, so bouncy. I think there was a couple of lines like indicating that this was just an act or that they were going to get a little darker or that they were potentially dark. Like on Waking Up where she says, is it all just a dream? Is life just a dream? I think. I could just be saying bullshit, but I think there was a, a very few couple of lines on Benito Generation that hinted at a more j dark tone from from this very bright poppy, poppy production and most of the time lyrics. So maybe I should have seen it coming, but I, no, I don't think anyone really did. That's not to say they're all dark and depressing. It's more like about growing up and sort of going from being this kid to an adult um, and changing the changes that happen. Happiness and all that gay shit. Um, they do a very good job wrapping up the emotions. Every song has a different personality and is about a different thing. Another song on the album that resonates well is Dear Future Self, where she's speaking. She's writing a letter to her future self saying, I, I hope you don't hate life. <laughs> I, I, I know I have a feeling that I will turn into an adult that hates life, but I really don't hope that happens to me. That's what it's sort of about. And she's she's saying that those two people are getting closer together, saying she's getting closer to like hating life and being depressed, which uh, I think resonates well with people growing up. And yeah, just a good, cool, emotional album. You'll, you'll find that most of the albums, in fact, probably all of them, is more about how they make me feel and what they mean to me than technically how sound they are like i think that's generally what i go towards with music and probably generally everything just what they mean to me rather than objectively speaking because then probably kids see ghost would win which you can't really find a flaw without the whole album but that's not what i'm into all right that was a lot longer than i expected eps uh two again this is going to be very much how it makes me feel number two deaf heaven i love deaf heaven um, if you love Deaf Heaven, it, it's sort of uh, it's sort of hard to explain why that being pretentious. It just makes you feel real good and hopeful and blissful. And there are a lot of sort of technically 
very questionable songs on this record, such as the first one, which Anthony Fantano called, quote, torture, which sort of pissed me off, but I can sort of see where he's coming from. It's not torture, but it's not that good. And it was saying some of it was elevator music, which again, I think is sort of disrespectful, but I can see where he's coming from as it's a little boring. It's definitely stripped back, a little too stripped back to be entertaining. But I don't think it needs to be, and I don't think people who listen to Deaf Heaven care that every song is entertaining and has something fresh and new every 10 seconds. They don't mind. They're in it for the feeling, other than the actual technical supremacy of it. Special mentions, Honeycomb, which was the first one that I was saying, I, this is shit, but it's only because they changed it up uh, quite a bit. And now it's one of my favorites. And also Glint, which is um, technically, I think, one of the stronger ones from it. That doesn't really have a dull moment throughout the song. And the final lyrics are, those who have forgotten, remember now, which speaks, I think, to a lot of their fans, I would say. And there's also, again, the whole growing up and losing yourself, I guess, type of thing. It's hard to explain what I mean without sounding like I'm just making it up. So listen to that if you like blissful type. I would even just say go check out Sunbather because I think that's technically a better record, but I like this record. I guess that was number three and time and place can be number four. So number two is JPEG Mafia Veteran which I think is objectively very good. I mean, I just like it because it's experimental hip hop. There's beat switch ups all throughout that are well done. It's extremely well produced. Um, if you're into experimental hip hop, definitely check this one out. That's why I didn't really want to speak about it because there's not much to say from my point of view. Anyway, number one. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's not even a guess. It's so obvious. Do I even need to say it? If you didn't know, Death Grips came out with a new album this year. There you go. That gives it away. Death Grips, Year of the Snitch. Easily my favorite, by far. Technically sounds, and um, to me, emotionally sounds. It is the polar opposite of Death Heaven. Death Grips is sort of like bathing in filth, like a pig. It's just bathing in dark emotions and darkness to feel good or feel comfort in darkness and filth. Whereas Death Heaven is the complete opposite. Blissful, you know, I don't wanna to get too gay about it. Yeah. Death Grips, um, it's just so good. <laughs> every, every song except probably Little Richard, which drags on the intro for a little bit too long, is just great. Production wise, lyric wise, very interesting. Um, Black Paint, which is a bag being shrouded in darkness. I think everyone can relate to. Sometimes you just wanna be alone which is a line, I require privacy. You, you just wanna be alone sometimes and in darkness. It makes me feel good listening to it. it. It feels good to just, this is a type of record that you just let go while listening to, as you could clearly see by the intro. <laughs> Favorite song is Black Paint off the record, um, uh, followed by The Fear probably, which is The Fear, The Fear is like Ride having an argument with, with himself about jumping off a balcony, killing himself. He's saying don't jump, like screaming don't jump on the chorus, which is just like really funny, but also I can sort of relate. You, you'll you probably be able to relate to a lot of what Ride says on this album, whether you admit it or not. And I should say you need to look up the lyrics for Deaf Heaven and Death Grips because they're both basically unintelligible. Anyway, top three singles. Um, I don't even feel like it's necessary at this point. I already covered the songs that were in my top five that's here. Some special mentions, I, I should just say for some, if you want casual recommendations. Harutsu Harits Yoira Harunimi, which is Japanese. It's sort of experimental, cute voice. So if you can imagine experimental with a cute Japanese kawaii voice on it, this is for you. And second mention, second special mention is Bark Your Head Off Dog by Hop Along. This is like hipster garbage, except good. Every song is catchy and well written. So that's it, that, I guess that's it. I don't really have a top five songs. I already talked about them in the album, so I don't need to really say anything. Black Paint, single of the year in my opinion. Death Grips, Death Heaven, Kero Kero Benito, forever. See ya.